All right, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to my senior project and great morning. I'd first off just like to say that what Danny has said about investing in the tech sector, that is completely true. It's very up and coming and it's very important that people get on that because what my project was is very techy and that's a big part of it. And my essential question was, what steps do I need to take to become a certified photonics technician? And that kind of manifested in me attending night school three nights a week at Stonehill College as a part of a year-long certificate program in photonics. Here is the mission statement and crest for Stonehill College. And here is the outline for my presentation. I'll start with an introduction to the science of photonics, which I'm sure most of you have never heard of, and the background of the program that I was a part of. And then I'll move to my own experience in the program, the creation of my product, or lack thereof, uh, the current state of affairs where I am right now, and then the conclusion for my entire presentation. So I'll start with an introduction to the program and photonics. So photonics is the applied science of light and photons, which is like really confusing to a lot of non-STEM people, but a photon is a particle of light. And in less STEM words, it's kind of the science of using light and photons in the same way that electricity and electrons are used for data transmission, which is instead of using a bunch of transistors to convey data, they just warp a beam of light to do that. And I think the most common application of photonics currently is fiber optics, which I'm sure some of you have heard of. Fiber optic cables are essentially cables that send a beam of light through it, and that light uh, conveys data. And really the only current application of that in, in fiber optics is long distance. So like undersea cables, stuff like that, because there are severe bottlenecks with the um, transmission from electricity to light and then back and forth. So that's why it's mainly long distance because it's more work to send something really far with like a lot of wait time than in something like a computer where you have to keep mixing everything around and that just takes a while and that's why it's not everywhere. And that is kind of why this program exists, is to kind of find people who can solve those bottlenecks and everything like that with the transduction of the energies. And the program actually started when the Navy contacted Stonehill asking for, hey, make a program that can turn everyday people like myself into certified photonics technicians who can work on and with these kinds of devices. And Stonehill said, sure, we'll do it. And they got two of their finest professors, Dr. Cheryl Schnitzer and Dr. Yuru Liu, to work on that. Here are both of the directors. There's Dr. Schnitzer and Dr. Liu. I know Dr. Schnitzer more personally because, funny enough, she went to Skidmore College for chemistry, which is coincidentally the same college that Ms. Cotis went to. And even more of a coincidence, they were roommates and are currently very good friends. And them being friends is how Ms. Cookies came to make me aware of the program and how I got my into the program. Here is a video in case any of you would like to learn more about photonics itself and the industry and how it's pretty much a revolution. Dr. Schnitzer does an excellent job kind of elucidating how important it is that people get on this and get studying and innovating. If you hit the arrow again, it'll go to my okay. Unless you want to watch it. Oh, it's super long. Okay. <laughs> uh, next, I'll talk about my own experience in the program, which was kind of most of what my project was. So, starting out in the program, it was complete shock. It was, of course, I was attending college, so it was nothing like anything I've ever done. I walked in, and I was surrounded by people I've never met, strangers from all walks of life. There are people from all kinds of backgrounds. And I actually became friends with a 55-year-old woman who's a veteran in customer service, which I never thought was possible, which kind of shows that Melissa is so much of a bubble. And that's why it's so shocking to kind of be thrown into this and have a bunch of diverse people. Here are a few of the classmates from there talking about this monstrosity. And that's actually the woman I just mentioned, Maureen. She's awesome. I love her. And to add to kind of the initial shock of being thrown into this with all the live machines everywhere is that Dr. Schnitzer encouraged me to find an internship before I knew I even learned anything about photonics, and I was like, sure. And then she did most of the legwork anyways and facilitated everything, but I initially got a job with a company called Opticos that agreed to pay for the program in return, and I would work for them afterwards for a year. 
And then the course breakdown is essentially there are nine courses total uh, divided across three semesters, one for the fall and winter, one for the spring, and one for the summer. I have finished the spring and I finished the winter and I still have to do the summer program. And it's three nights a week, three hours each night, an hour away, and that was pretty much it. And then for most of the courses that I've taken, they're basically manufacturing courses about how manufacturing works, how to manage it, how to do control of certain processes and stuff like that. And then there were a few classes that were based on electricity and how to use electronics. And that class kind of hurt a lot of people, which is why I'm starting going into my third semester with six classmates instead of the initial 12 that I started with. And that kind of was really difficult to learn something completely new, like electricity and electronics. I had known nothing about it before, and then I was thrown into it and expected to learn it, and it was really difficult, especially for someone like me who had never really done anything like this. And of course, with attending high school and high school at the same time, I had no time to do anything. So that was really, really rough, because I had no time to do homework, no time to do night school or day school at the same time, so that was really difficult, which flows over into Oh, wait, I'll do that next. This is a photo gallery of a bunch of photos that I had taken myself when I was initially planning for my end product. Uh, here is classmates working on something that's a CNC machine that drills pieces out of metal. It's crazy. And then there's a door and an electron microscope. And next I'll talk about my creation of my product, or like I said, lack thereof, because it was really difficult. So, in the beginning of the year, I was so pumped to get this started, and then Ms. Bookies dropped the ball on me because she was my mentor, that I had to create a product that kind of related to the community. And I was like, well, what do I do now? So I initially thought of doing a documentary, like a full-length documentary about the program, about me being in it. It was going to be super personal. It was going to have lots of interviews, and I planned and shot a few of the interviews. This is me gearing up for one of the interviews that is the camera that Maddie used that was broken, I may have broken it, I'm not sure. <laughs> and then that original plan for my documentary failed because I had no time to do any of it. So I had all this B-roll that was shot, I had all these interviews planned, I had script written, and I just couldn't put it all together because I had no time. And I talked to Miss talked to Miss Manning about it and she suggested that I do a promotional piece that would be significantly shorter be less personal and just be about the program itself rather than my experience in it. And I, and I said that that sounds like a great idea, and I realized that I still had to make a film for it, and I still did not have time to make another film. So I kind of procrastinated on that until I did not have time, and then I was left without an idea for who to do anything. And then that's what led me to my plan C, which was Andrew Mark being my saving grace, mm -hmm. and coming up and saying that he was doing the senior project day thing. And then I was like, of course, I will love to do that. And that gave me kind of a new way to share food products with the entire school and with the students. So I planned a presentation for that and then completely forgot my entire plan for that presentation and kind of just winged it. And a lot of what I said went over the heads of all the students who attended my presentation, which I assume is what's happening right now. So yeah, that was, I could have planned better and I could have talked more about the basics instead of jumping into everything that I was talking about. So that was executed poorly on my part, but I still got it out there that this program existed. I'll talk about my current state of affairs in the program as I'm headed into my third semester. So my internship, to add to all the setbacks, uh, did not come through because the company Opticos initially told me that they could not take me on. They could not hire me after the program because there just existed no work. So I was out of a job at the end of the program, but they still didn't pay for me, so that was kind of stressed. I was relieved, and instead of going to Opticos, I had to write a resume and everything because they just hired me without understanding who I was, so I had to do the whole process over again, and then for a while I was without any kind of direction for where I was going to go with my job. And then I recently applied to a company called Lexitech, and I got an interview with them yesterday for next week, which I'm really excited about. Here's a photo, a uh, low quality photo, of their labs at Lexitech, which I'm really excited to work at. And then after the program, I hope to work for Lexitech for a year, and then hopefully that will turn into a way to pay for college, because it is very expensive. And that kind of, the program itself, 
itself once I leave, I hope that it will kind of prepare the world and pave the way for more photonics technicians, especially from MILES. I hope that MILES and especially the STEAM scholars will be able to do more with what I did and hopefully make it more of a curriculum for MILES itself. And now I'll be concluding my presentation. So I'll start with my opinions on my project. I do not recommend doing this project as a senior in high school because the program is definitely an amazing opportunity that I learned a lot from and I'll be in the workforce super early, which is awesome for me. But I had no time to do anything and this completely consumed my life and caused a lot of burnout and that burnout is what led to a lack of an actual product that I created. So that was really rough, but I definitely enjoyed it and I saw the value in being able to learn everything I did. Uh, there was a photo of Dr. Chancer and a student of the uh, photonics major at Stanford. And I have a lot of successes in the program because I became, or I'm going to become a certified photonics technician and I learned a lot and I was able to at least expose Millis to the idea of being a part of this even though I doubt anyone will actually do it because it requires such a great time, uh, requires a lot of time. <laughs> And my shortcomings, of course, were with the product that I did not create, and I wish I had created, and that sucked a lot. But I'm glad that I did what I could, even though I didn't do very much. Made my work excited for a few of the photos in the crowd, please. The photo on slide 12 was actually from the person who I was interviewing who took a photo of me while I was doing it. And any questions? 